President Donald Trump explaining his decision to pull back on planned U.S. military strikes against Iran. On Twitter Friday morning, he pointed to the shootdown of a U.S. drone, saying the U.S. was, quote, cocked and loaded to strike three Iranian missile sites in retaliation. Mr. Trump later told NBC News that he's willing to sit down with Iran's leaders, but he also had this warning. I'm not looking for war. And if there is, it'll be obliteration like you've never seen before. But I'm not looking to do that. But you can't have a nuclear weapon. You want to talk good, otherwise you can have a bad economy no for the next three years. N not as far as I'm concerned. No preconditions. The commander-in-chief's decision to call off an attack on Iran came as different advisors urged far different courses of action. Our Caitlin Collins reports from the White House. I didn't think it was proportionate. President Trump explaining his last-minute decision to call off his planned strike on Iran. Nothing is green-lighted until the very end because things okay. change. Telling NBC News he stopped the retaliatory attack in the 11th hour after being told 150 people would likely die. They came and they said, sir, we're ready to go. We'd like a decision. I said, I want to know something before you go. How many people will be killed? It's information the commander in chief would typically get when being presented with military options. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was proportionate. But the president denied it was so last minute that planes were already in the air. No, but they would have been pretty soon. Uh, and things would have happened to a point where you wouldn't turn back or couldn't turn back. It's a decision that pits the president against his top advisors. Sources tell CNN Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and National Security Advisor John Bolton both favored striking Iran, while outside advisors reminded him of his promise to get the U.S. out of wars, not in them. In the end, Trump opted for restraint over retaliation. Some Republicans are against Trump's retreat. It'll send a message that the red line may not be so red. While unlikely Democrats are praising the move. I don't think the people should be jumping out of the president's throat for wanting to uh, think this through and make sure that uh, Neither side miscalculates, uh, and we don't inadvertently end up in a war with Iran. Others said pulling back is a sign of the indecision in the West Wing. You should not be saying stuff like that publicly because it gives the impression of a level of indecision that I don't think is helpful to us. Now, the president announced in his tweet that the United States had imposed more sanctions against Iran Thursday night, but based on our sourcing, there have been no new sanctions imposed against Iran and none announced by the Treasury Department. Now, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin did announce in a speech that if Iran continues with its activity related to money laundering and terrorist financing, there will be additional countermeasures imposed, but right now, no new sanctions have been added. We asked the White House what is behind the president's false claim about these sanctions, and so far, they have not gotten back to us. Caitlin Collins, CNN, the White House. Our Sam Kiley joins us now from the United Arab Emirates. And Sam, talk to us about reaction in that part of the world to the lack of a military retaliation on the part of the U.S. Well, the Iranians have said uh, through their foreign ministry spokesman that uh, whatever the decision-making process, any violation of Iranian airspace will be seen uh, as just that, a breach of international law, and will be met as, any, as would any act of force uh, within their airspace with what they call uh, strong defensive capabilities. They're still stressing, as are the United States in all of this, that they don't want any kind of an armed conflict, but they are saying they're prepared for it should one come. On top of that, uh, the Iranian parliament is due to meet uh, tomorrow uh, to discuss uh, the uh, downing of the drone and the U.S. reaction to it. Again, uh, cementing, trying to cement uh, public support behind this hardline approach being taken uh, against the U.S. and their continuing sanctions against Iran. Because, Rick, if this is what it all goes back to, the withdrawal of the United States from the JCPOA, the nuclear agreement signed between the United States, Iran, Britain, France, Germany, China, Russia, uh, to put on hold, at least for 10 years, the American nuclear program. Americans walked away from that last year and imposed these very heavy sanctions. And ultimately, all of these gestures being made, or at least attributed to Iran, whether it's the bombing of tankers here, the downing of the drone, uh, attacks, sporadic attacks near American personnel or compounds in Iraq, 
all of them are being interpreted as, you, as, as uh, Iran putting pressure uh, on the international community effectively to say, you need to talk to us, we need to come uh, back to the table. But President Trump in that interview also saying that there'd be no uh, conditions, as far as he's concerned, for talks with Iran. But the Iranians are saying that sanctions have to be lifted ahead of them. So they have a diplomatic impasse. British Foreign Minister, Deputy Foreign Minister Morrison is going there uh, tomorrow to Tehran to try to represent the Western interests, particularly those interested in keeping Iran on track within that uh, nuclear deal, Rick, because it's uh, the end of this month by which the Iranians have said they will exceed production of uh, low enriched uranium, civilian use uranium, uh, beyond the threshold that they're allowed under that deal. Rick? Sam Carley live for us in the UAE. Sam, thanks very much. Earlier, my colleague George House spoke with Amy Pope. Amy is a former member of the U.S. National Security Council under former President Barack Obama, and now she is an associate fellow with Chatham House. What they've done is they've escalated tension with Iran, but without any discernible end in sight. It's not clear what the bottom line strategy is here. And the fact is the president triggered the escalation and then pulled it back. So that suggests chaos, that suggests confusion, that does not create a situation where American citizens are safer. But it does point to a bureaucratic breakdown within the White House. First of all, it appears that the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, is consistently at odds with the president. Time and again, he's public, publicly out there advocating a course of action that the president publicly backs away from. And that's a real problem. We don't have a secretary of defense. We have the president publicly undermining other officials. It's, it's just chaos within the White House. That's bad for the U.S. in general in terms of its strategic goals. Curious to get your thoughts on the reason uh, for why the strike was called off. President Trump said that he was told 150 lives would be lost just a short time before the strike was to take place. Again, only after he asked about that, several analysts have pointed out, they've indicated that it's hard to believe the president wasn't briefed about that critical information before uh, the strike, uh, well before the strike. What are your thoughts? It's just not credible to suggest that he didn't have that information. If he didn't have that information, it's because he willfully chose not to get that information. But that is the standard kind of information that his advisors would have provided in a briefing be before they decided to move forward with this plan. So it's not clear, was he not listening? Was he not in the room? Was there considerable planning going on without him? All of those are not great scenarios in terms of his, his leadership and his critical thinking. Um, but more likely, this is part of the theater um, that we see consistently from this president. He sees governing as political theater and, and he paints it in a way um, that doesn't really uh, fit with the way the government works. And he does so, I think, to make himself look like a more decisive actor. Play it forward, Amy, for people around the world to, to get a sense of what would a war with Iran look like? This is clearly not a good outcome. Congress is, is, has been clear with the president and with the public that they would not support these actions. The American public is not looking to get into a war with Iran. I mean, this is not where the United States wants to be. It's not consistent with the president's policy to the extent there is any foreign policy to date. Um, there, it's not an easy resolution. Um, so why we would consider getting into a protracted uh, conflict with Iran is, is beyond me. Um, and I don't think that's where the American people are. And I think that would be very damaging move for this president to take. But again, uh, Iran, its proxies, how would it play out? Uh, Iran does have a quite ability, quite a great deal of ability in that region, doesn't it? It does. It has tremendous influence in the region. And then again, we're looking at beyond the region itself. What is the impact on Russia? You look at where China has been. China has been progressively making inroads across the world, globally extending its power. It has a significant infrastructure initiative where it is um, building um, roads and infrastructure across the world. And all this time, the United States is being distracted by something um, with Iran. So I think it's, it's dangerous in terms of the actual impact in, in terms of the conflict with Iran. But more importantly, it's dangerous because of the channel that it opens for China to cement its influence around the world.